Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Six-year-old shot dead in central Kingston. Reporters understand that a six-year-old was shot dead in Rose Gardens community in the Kingston Central Police Division yesterday. The incident reportedly occurred on texting in the community. Rose Gardens is most popularly known as spoilers. The child was rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital where efforts to resuscitate her failed. The police are investigating the killing. Preliminary reports are that a man who was in the process of cleaning an illegal gun when the firearm went off. Reporters understand that the man has since fled the community to a neighboring community. Double Murder Rock, Spanish Town A man and a woman were gunned down in a section of Spanish Town St. Catherine on the weekend. The deceased are 51-year-old Mason, Percy Wheeler of Banana Lane in Lake Spen, and 47-year-old Verit Miller, otherwise called Simone, a janitor at Quarry Hill, both from Spanish Town. Reports from the police are that about 7 p.m. on Saturday, Wheeler and Miller were seated in a lane in Quarry Heights when they were approached by two armed men who opened gunfire hitting them. The culprits then fled the community on foot. The police were alerted and the injured persons assisted to hospital where they died. Investigations are ongoing. Construction worker held with two firearms. A construction worker from Kingston was arrested on Sunday after two firearms were discovered in his waistband. Reports are that about 5.30 p.m., a team was on patrol in the Okiwa community of St. Andrew when they observed a man, identified as Nicholas Young Monroe, running into a yard. The team reported the chase Monroe and accosted him. The police said he was told to put up his hands and when he complied, a silver firearm fell from his waistband. He was searched and a Block Taurus 9mm pistol was also recovered from the front of his waistband. The police said the firearms were a silver Barita 9mm pistol serial with a magazine loaded with 14 live 9mm cartridges and one live 9mm round in the beach and black Taurus 9mm pistol serial with a magazine loaded with 16 live 9mm cartridges and one live one in the bridge. Corporate entities donate to end campus hunger at UTEC. Students at the University of Technology UTEC who face food insecurity are set to benefit from donations courtesy of water, Nescafe 3-in-1 and True Shake. The donations are being made in response to a recent study funded by the UTEC Research Development Fund which revealed that at least half of the UTEC students' population suffers from severe food insecurity. UTEC Students' Union Council Vice President Tavoy Barrett shared that a student is considered to be suffering from food insecurity once they worry about where their next meal is coming from, basically not having a reliable source of nutritious food. He further explained that students can suffer from mild to severe food insecurity and indicated that students who suffer from mild case may go two or three days or not knowing where the next meal is coming from while those suffering from severe case can go seven days consecutively. In response to the growing trend of food insecurity, the council launched sub-campaigns of its End Campus Hunger Initiative, dubbed Share Your Breakfast and Share Your Meal, to negate the issue. It says food insecurity has long plagued students but has increased dramatically during the pandemic. According to a release, the End Campus Hunger Initiative has so far assisted over 100 students with items to prepare at least three meals daily. Jelly Ann Campbell, Managing Director of Fan Promotions and Media Management Services, and past students of UTEC said she saw the potential for the initiative to impact a greater number of students and solicit support from corporate Jamaica. The results of the study were alarming to me, so I decided to play my role as a past student and use the resources and connections that I have to help the students. The clients and colleagues that I reached out to were all too willing to come on board and the UTEC Students' Union were really receptive, Campbell said. Late November, Campbell handed over sizable package donations to the Students' Union. I know this is just a drop in the bucket, but I hope my efforts and the efforts of others will help these students to persevere and get through this difficult time in their lives, she said. The businesswoman, who has since been appointed as a mentor at the university's mentorship program, 
is imploring other corporate entities and alumni members to come on board and support students. American NAB in drug bus at Sangster Airport. An American has been taken into custody following a drug seizure at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James on Saturday. According to reports, the woman was about to board a flight to Charlotte in the United States when the narcotics police searched her luggage and found a white substance resembling cocaine in a secret compartment. She was taken into custody. The drug reportedly weighed 4.25 pounds and has an estimated street value of US 96,500. Her name is being withheld pending a formal interview in the presence of her attorney. Canada invests $21 million in Jamaican communities, including support for women impacted by gender-based violence. The Government of Canada, through the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives, CFLI donated $21 million to the Bureau of Gender Affairs and seven local organizations to support various community-based projects including gender-based violence, GBV interventions, and the COVID-19 response. According to a statement from the Canadian government, the funding will go towards supporting interventions that prevent violence against women and children, help victims and survivors access safe spaces, provide entrepreneurship opportunities, skill building, mental health services, and counseling. At the official launch and showcase held on Monday, High Commissioner of Canada to Jamaica, Emina, said sexual and gender-based violence, in all its forms, is always unacceptable. Canada remains committed to working to eliminate this violence, support survivors, and hold perpetrators to account. We believe that this begins with the gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls, she added. At the launch, the Bureau of Gender Affairs was officially handed over $3,075,000 to strengthen economic and psychosocial support offer at national shelters. Minister of Culture, Gender Entertainment and Sport, Olivia Grange, received the check donation. I am very happy to have been involved in today's launching of the CFLI, the Ministry of Culture, Gender Entertainment and Sports, remains committed to building on this strong partnership and we are looking forward to seeing the impact of the project on the ground. More than ever, we are also grateful for the funding received to support the Bureau's work against gender-based violence, Grange added. The Ministry remains committed to maintaining this strong relationship between Canada and Jamaica, she noted. The aid project recipients, including the Bureau of Gender Affairs, will implement activities to address social and economic issues arising from the pandemic for the 2021 to 2022 period. The seven local organizations are International Women's Coffee Alliance, Southeast Cockpit Country Local Forest Management Committee, Grand Mountain Local Forest Management Committee, Transverse, the Peace Management Initiative, Women of Destiny, Northgate Youth and Family Development Foundation. Northgate Youth and Family Foundation and Women of Destiny will implement awareness building activities for GBV issues through forums targeting the business community, other key stakeholders and communities on the North Coast. Transwave Jamaica, through a series of business development workshops and an incubator program, will enable transgender persons to establish businesses while receiving support from a wide coalition of partners through forum and other networking events. From the start of the pandemic, the Government of Canada has taken swift measures to support local organizations in providing essential support and services to women and their families experiencing GBV, this statement said. CMOC says states of emergency as a crime-fighting tool are not part of their consensus to fight crime. The Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee, CMOC, says the specific use of states of public emergency as a crime-fighting tool do not form part of its 2020 consensus to fight crime. In a statement issued, CMOC is calling for the speedy passing of the Enhanced Security Measures Act, which it says will resolve the main concerns regarding the use of military to address criminal activity. This as the government and opposition continue to be at odds over the measure. Just the last month, CMOC Chairman Lloyd Distant argued that the body was not opposed to the use of states of public emergency. 
shortly after they were announced. CMOC has no objection to the calling of the state of emergency. In the consensus agreement, we were very clear around the conditions under which there would be support for the state of emergency, which includes things like the homicide rate would have to be above 32 per 100,000 average. In these areas that have been defined, the homicide rate is well above that number, so it's well above the Jamaica average, not just that the fact that it's well above the international and regional averages. Just broadly speaking, when we go through the things that we all agree, the conditions under which we would support a state of emergency, those boxes were all checked in this instance. However, in a statement this morning, CMOC says its remit does not include taking positions on matters that are not agreed under the consensus. It says it's important to note that SOEs were not a specific area of the agreement under that accord. However, CMOX says there was a consensus on the use of the military, with the caveat that this should be as prescribed by law. This would apply in all instances where the use of the military was contemplated, including in a zone of special operations, as well as under a state of emergency. It says the oversight body is not suitably qualified to adjudicate the conflicting views of the government and opposition on this matter. It says in recognition of the disagreement, the parties had already agreed in the consensus to pursue new legislation to provide for special powers under an Enhanced Security Measure Act, ESMA. The timeline for this legislation to be brought before the parliament passed as of June this year. CMOC says the ESMA should resolve the main outstanding concerns, making it critical to get it back on track as quickly as possible. It says the use of the military is widely acknowledged to at best involve time-limited interventions to assist in the restoration of law and order where there are imminent threats to the security of the state and the safety of the citizenry. CMOC contends that the use of the military is just one of the 40 actions that were agreed upon and embedded in the consensus. It says the fact that there has been a disagreement in just one of the 40 areas over the first 15 months of the consensus is a testament to the strength that underpins it and the robustness of the agreements. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.